through Bill 18. The member for Edmonton Gold Bar. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm pleased to rise in support of uh, Bill 18, an act to ensure independent environmental monitoring. Uh, I'm sure that many in this House are aware that uh, I worked for seven years as a, as a groundwater specialist at Envi Alberta Environment. Uh, so I have first-hand knowledge of uh, the process that the department went through uh, in setting up the Alberta uh, monitoring agency that we're now dismantling. And I have to say, uh, Madam Speaker, that um, a, a number of our staff were concerned at, at the process. A number of environment staff were, of course, concerned at the quality, the integrity, uh, the independence of the monitoring that our department was doing uh, back when this was a, a function carried out by Alberta Environment. Uh, and certainly many of us uh, in, in the civil service were quite relieved when Dr. David Schindler pointed out some of the holes that existed in the, in the monitoring program at that time uh, and of course prompted the government of the day to undertake a review of how monitoring in the oil sands area in particular was undertaken and suggested some changes. I think many in the civil service, it's fair to say, thought that perhaps the government of the day went a step too far, that rather than ensuring, uh, uh, taking, taking me measures to just reform the way Alberta environment was set up, to ensure the independent uh, uh, monitoring that, that we're trying to establish, they, they resorted to uh, an old trick, let's say, uh, of setting up an arm's length agency, because that seemed to be the solution to any problem that government faced at the time. That uh, if you had a problem with something that was going on with government, you take that function out of government and you set up an independent agency, and, and magically the problem would be fixed. Uh, and, and, of course, we see now, after three years of, uh, of this experiment, that that didn't actually fix the problem. Uh, that the work um, that, that needs to be done wasn't actually getting done because there were so many problems with setting up the agency. Uh, Madam Speaker, I saw firsthand uh, the trouble that people had uh, deciding whether or not they should work for Alberta Environment anymore or work for Amera. Uh, because they weren't sure if, where their job naturally fit, right? I, I worked side by side with hydrologists, with limnologists, uh, who loved their job passionately uh, and wanted to continue on doing the job in the organization that was going to continue doing that kind of work, but they were never sure, Madam Speaker, whether that work was going to be continued uh, under uh, Alberta Environment or the monitoring agency. And as a result, Madam Speaker, some of our monitoring staff were moved over to the monitoring agency. Some of the monitoring staff stayed at Alberta Environment. They were often working on the same projects, just in, uh, across different agencies. Uh, and it took a toll, Madam Speaker, on the quality of the work that was undertaken by those two agencies, as well as on staff morale. The staff who did move over to Amera were never really sure how long they were going to be there. The budgetary questions uh, that were asked about the certainty of uh, the predictability, the sustainability of funding of the agency had never been answered satisfactorily. So my friends who went to go work for the agency were never really sure whether or not their next paycheck was going to come from Amera or from Alberta Environment or whether their jobs were going to be cut altogether. Uh, so Madam Speaker, I'm, I'm quite relieved that our government is taking action to uh, establish the certainty in, in the role of Alberta Environment in carrying out this monitoring work. You know, the member from Lacombe Pinoca talked about uh, a big government. And uh, if he, you know, gave this any more than just a passing thought, uh, he'd realize that we're actually shrinking government because we're taking the work that's being done by two agencies now and, and, and shrinking it and shrinking it, Madam Speaker, into one agency. And that only makes sense. That's what the civil servants that I worked with wanted from day one. We warned our political masters of the day that by establishing this uh, agency that we would be duplicating functions, that we would be delegating responsibility so that we weren't sure who was responsible for what. And when you have those kinds of situations, Madam Speaker, uh, it turns out that nobody's responsible for anything and no work gets done. And so I'm glad that we're pr uh, proceeding with uh, dismantling Amera and rolling those functions back into the Environment Department because now we know who's responsible for environmental monitoring all across the province. It's the government of Alberta. And our civil servants will know who they're working with, who they're working for, what their job is. And I'm certain, Madam Speaker, um, that as a result, 
the, the, the work that will be uh, done will be better than it has been over the past uh, two or three years when civil servants have been trying to do their job in spite of the chaos that's been happening at the management level. Um, I want to address a couple of points that have been raised uh, by our friends from across the aisle here uh, in, this, in this debate. You know, they have concerns about um, political interference, Madam Speaker. And, and I have to say that when Amero was set up, that we had concerns about political interference. Of course, we know that Dr. Lauren Taylor was the chair of Amera, and we also know that Dr. Lauren Taylor is a confirmed climate change denier, right? Much like many of our uh, friends from across the way. And the member from Calgary Mountain View, in fact, lost his job because he had the courage to stand up and, and say that climate change is a real problem, that it's caused by human activity, and that the government needed to do something to fix it. So, uh, uh, yeah, thank, thank, thank you, uh, Cal uh, Calgary Mountain View. The member from uh, Edmonton Highlands Norwood is causing me to doubt myself. Uh, I, don't, I, don't do, I don't do that very often. <laughs> <laughs> so when you set up a, a confirmed climate change denier in charge of the uh, uh, agency that's tasked with monitoring uh, the environment, of course you're going to have concerns, right? Uh, so, in fact, there will always be concerns around the political uh, leadership and their ability to undertake uh, scientific endeavors in, in the province, whoever the leader is, Madam Speaker. I think that the, the advantage of this bill is that we have one agency responsible uh, for carrying out the, the monitoring. So um, I also want to, you know, you know, address some comments made by our, our friends in the Wild Rose uh, Party about the fact that they don't trust the minister. Um, because I think that it's, it's a convenient talking point for them. And, and, it, and they want to deflect from the, the reality, Madam Speaker, that they don't trust government at all to do anything. You know, in his, in, in his uh, response to the maiden speech in the last session of the legislature, the member for Morinville Barhead Westlock actually said that government was a negative force. I'm paraphrasing. But that government was, by its nature, a destructive force. So, of course, uh, of course that, that reflects the Wild Rose's view of government, is that there is nothing that the government can do well because the government is, isn't supposed to do anything, Madam Speaker. So they like to say that they don't trust the minister, but what's at the heart of their argument, Madam Speaker, is that they don't actually trust government to do anything. And of course, this, this, is, this, is, one of the, this is one of the many reasons, Madam Speaker, that that party is not fit to run this province. And we're certain, we are certain, Madam Speaker, that the people of Alberta see that especially when it comes to the issue of environmental monitoring, Madam Speaker, because there are no people in this country who are more concerned about the environment than the people of Alberta, and they don't want a bunch of people who don't understand science and don't believe that government has a role in protecting the environment running this province, Madam Speaker. And I, I want to touch on another subject that the members opposite have raised a number of times in this debate, Madam Speaker, and that is the fact that they are afraid that the minister will somehow politically interfere in the science that's uh, involved, as if the minister herself is going to run around uh, the Athabasca River and collect samples and then, you know, throw the ones that disagree with her uh, preconceived notions out of the boat so that the only ones that support her hypothesis are the ones that are run in the lab, Madam Speaker, which is ridiculous. Of course, if these people had any idea how government functions, which they don't, right, they would know that our environment department is staffed from top to bottom with professional scientists who abide by a code of ethics and will not let their work be meddled with by any political masters, Madam Speaker. And that is one of the reasons that we have one of the best public services in the whole country, Madam Speaker, is because we are staffed top to bottom with professionals who carry out their work without respect to what the desires of their political masters are, Madam Speaker.
And on the issue of trusting science, Madam Speaker, of course we know that there are a number of, uh, a number of people in the Wild Rose Party who frequently tweet about whether or not climate change is real. So of course they don't, they don't believe in evidence even when it's been presented by thousands of scientists who work, have been working on this for years and years. And also, Madam Speaker, I, I recall a particular incident uh, last summer when Alberta Environment released uh, air quality reports uh, focused on, on red deer, air quality issues in red deer. Of course, this was work that was undertaken by professional scientists, professional air quality monitoring, uh, who have worked in the department for a number of years. The, the samples, I believe, were collected between the uh, years of 2011 and 2013. So long before this minister was even present in this chamber, Madam Speaker, the air quality results were quite concerning. There were levels of PAHs, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, for people who probably don't know what PAH stands for, that were, that were concerned, Madam Speaker. This is, uh, this is air quality concerns that uh, would, if they continued on, would have legitimate health impacts. What was the member of Grand Prairie Smokey's response to the, to the release? Oh, this is political interference from a minister who's committed to phasing out coal. Or what was the member from Chestermere Rocky View's response? The same thing, that we can't trust the minister to present science. Of course, they don't under, what they don't say, Madam Speaker, is that they don't understand the science that was presented to them. And Madam Speaker, it is human nature to fear what you don't understand. And so out of fear, they automatically attack the Minister of the Environment, somehow politically interfering with the independent work that's undertaken by our uh, uh, air quality monitoring in the department. It's absolutely ridiculous that these people are even in this chamber, Madam Speaker, to talk about the quality of... Uh, to caution the members in the house about the language that we use when we're speaking of members of you. So would you like to continue or okay. So I would I would just like to sum up Madam Speaker by saying that this bill improves the efficiency of of government that it ensures the clear lines of responsibility it enhances the work that our civil servants will do and so, <clears throat> Madam Speaker, this will significantly improve the quality of the work that the Alberta government will be able to do in the area of environmental monitoring. So I, I encourage all of our members to ignore what the other side are saying because they've demonstrated clearly that they don't trust government, that they don't understand science time and time again, and that they don't really know what they're talking about when they're debating this bill, Madam Speaker. <laughs> So I look forward to, to this House passing this bill and our environment uh, department getting to the work of protecting the environment for our future generations. Thank you, Madam Speaker.